Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And right now on GMSA at 8, a man in critical condition after San Antonio police say he was stabbed multiple times. What we know about the investigation so far. Plus, it's opening weekend for a Texas size exhibit you don't want to miss. We'll be live from the San Antonio Botanical Garden for more on what you can expect. 64 degrees, 8 a.m. on this Sunday morning. It's beautiful outside. Katie will let us know how long this beautiful fall like weather will stick around for. And good morning. I'm David Sears. And I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, September 20th. Thank you so much for waking up with us this Sunday morning. Grab your coffee, grab your breakfast taco and go outside Head outside. You might even need a jacket if you're going to go sit on the back porch. If there's a little if, breeze. Yeah, if you're anything like me, 60 yeah. degrees, you need a jacket. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, yeah, it feels a lot like fall this morning. I wish I could say it's going to hang around all day, but just like yesterday, we'll warm up, but things will stay pretty comfortable even this afternoon with some drier air in place. But yeah, enjoy it. 64 beautiful degrees. North winds at eight miles per hour, so a little bit of a breeze. We're actually going to see our wind speeds uh, increase by this afternoon to around 10 to 20 miles per hour. So another nice breeze will kick in later today. Temperature wise, mid 60s here in San Antonio, but we've got some 50s up in the hill country. 64 in Beeville, 62 in Gonzales. Everyone's got some drier air in place. And again, that's why today is going to be overall a very pleasant day. Plenty of sunshine and dry air. High Temperatures topping out mid to upper 80s, but late today, tonight and into tomorrow, things will start to change just a bit. We'll have more clouds around tomorrow and also a little chance of rain. And of course, that is because of Tropical Storm Beta. Looking at Doppler radar right now, things are very quiet, but Beta is out in the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to start to move toward Texas during the day today, and that will bring us a chance of some scattered showers into Monday with rain chances dropping off by Tuesday. We'll talk more about Beta and what your week has in store coming up in just a bit. David. Thank you, Katie. We'll look forward to that. In your top stories this morning, a man remains in critical condition after San Antonio police say he was stabbed several times late last night. Officers say it happened around 1015 last night in the 900 block of West Mulberry Avenue. Police say the victim is in his 30s. He came home with stab wounds. He was taken to the University Hospital in critical condition. In the meantime, several witnesses are being questioned. San Antonio police are searching for a suspect this morning following an overnight crash just north of downtown. According to officers on scene, two people were driving northbound on Highway 281 near Mulberry when the driver lost control and rolled the vehicle several times, landing on the wall divider. Both people inside that car took off running, but police caught one of them down the road. He is being held for a possible DWI. The other person in the car remains on the run. We have an update to an Amber Alert issued over the weekend. The Wells Police Department says officers have found a truck associated with the disappearance of one month old Armadure Argument, but the child is still missing and believed to be in grave or immediate danger. Armadure is 22 inches tall, weighs nine pounds, has black hair and brown eyes. Police say he was last seen just wearing a diaper. That was at 830 Friday morning in Wells. Wells a little more than 280 miles away from San Antonio and anyone with any information is asked to call the number on your screen. On well, the latest involving the coronavirus here in Bear County, San Antonio health officials have reported another 173 new cases in the last 24 hours. Fortunately, there were no new deaths. Metro Health continues to report a decrease in hospitalizations right now. There are 214 patients in local hospitals. 83 of those people are in the ICU. 43 are in ventilators. When it comes to numbers in Texas, health officials are reporting 3,433 new COVID-19 cases and 135 more deaths. That brings the total to 686,068. And the death toll stands now at 14,848. The state health department estimates that 605,522 people have recovered from the virus and that there are currently 65,698 active cases. Well, Bear County residents gathered at the Bear County Courthouse for a vigil in honor of late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. During the vigil, people paid their respects locally, remembering the justice warrior RBG and her impact on lives. I think especially for, for women lawyers and young women, she was a real inspiration because she was so strong, extremely hardworking, very precise, wrote beautifully, 
and was very respected in the profession. And Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The speakers at the vigil called for nation officials to respect the final wishes of Ruth Bader Ginsburg by selecting the next justice after the presidential election. The passing of Justice Ginsburg also felt at a voter registration event at Bandit Barbecue near downtown. Stephen Delgado runs Bear Essentials Clothing Company and has also become a deputy registrar. Delgado has been running his own voter registration drives outside of coffee shops and restaurants in areas of downtown. He says he needs a little help and a little push when it comes to getting registered. Raised by his mother, he says he wouldn't be where he is today without her and that she couldn't have done it without RBG paving the way. It was because of RBG that my mom was able to do those things and be in corporate America as a female with kids. And so it's impacted me quite a bit. It's impacted my wife and, you know, it's impacted my 11 year old. You know, we have a conversation about it last night. And I would be lying if I didn't wake up this morning with a new passion for getting people registered to vote. Delgado says he's done 10 of these registration events so far and plans continuing doing as many as he can. Well, speaking of registering to vote, you can do that. You can do so this week while getting a complimentary haircut. That's because the good kind has teamed up with local boutique Twirl Salon to offer complimentary haircuts tomorrow from 4 to 7 p.m. to those directly affected by COVID-19. It's happening at the good kind spacious outdoor garden lounge. At 1127 South St. Mary Street, haircuts will be given on a first come, first serve basis for those in the service and hospitality industry to frontline workers and single family households. Clean hair and masks are required in order to partake in this event. It is a Texas sized debut at the San Antonio Botanical Gardens. The newest exhibition, Origami in the Garden, kicks off this weekend with outdoor sculptures inspired by. Paper art. Alicia Barretta is live from the newest exhibit inside the Botanical Gardens. Good morning, Alicia. What does it look like out there? Good, good morning. Well, everything is calm. It opens up about at 10 a.m. But first, I want to ask y'all something. This is tiny. It's probably it's smaller than the size of my hand. What does this look like to y'all? Like a anything, anything, like a little anything? birdie. I don't. Is it going to be a okay, flower? Okay. Yeah. So I didn't finish it, but I was trying to make a hummingbird. This is as far, it would go this way. I think this is the head. Anyway, so I'm no expert, you guys, but this is just so you get the Texas size. Origami is so tiny. It's made out of a piece of paper, and then you can make creations like these, they, even a boat. I think I'd be an expert as a boat, so at making a boat. So origami, if you don't know, it means folding paper in Japanese. And here at the Botanical, San Antonio Botanical Garden, you're going to be able to explore an outdoor sculpture exhibit. So these right here, are obviously the paper products, but outside when you walk around the San Antonio Botanical Garden, you'll be able to witness and see just the beautiful artwork, but it's going to be made out of metal. So this exhibit, the big day opening day was yesterday, but today families have a chance to come check out and they actually have hands-on activity um, for the kids. So that's something cool. Perhaps they can learn how to make a better hummingbird than I can. But we just wanted to show you what origami is. Obviously, this is my attempt, but this is a professional over here. That's why they're in those beautiful cases. But stick around with us here on GMSA because in the next half hour, we're actually going to be going through the garden, hopefully showing you maybe one or two of these beautiful metal origami sculptures that you'll be able to see here at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Sarah, I think you're off to a good start. I think she's off to a good start. Yeah. Good job, yeah. Alicia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it is 809 and 64 degrees. Still ahead, a new Pepsi drink is putting people to sleep. Huh? Literally. Details on what you can expect drift well in stores. Huh. Well, plus, would you stay a night at a haunted hotel? Absolutely not. After the break, we'll show you where you can just in time for Halloween. You wouldn't spend the night no. in a haunted hotel? I mean, I'm not scared of ghosts, but I just, like, don't have time for them, you know? This is no ghost story. This is real right here. 64 degrees, beautiful day in store. Katie Blake's got your forecast coming up. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Well, welcome back. It's 8.13. We were just telling ghost stories. If you're a person who likes to be spooked, here it is.
Well, the historic Magnolia Hotel in Seguin, which is rumored to be haunted, is offering overnight stays as a bed and breakfast. You can make a reservation through Airbnb as the nearly 180 year old hotel is being restored to its former glory. The guest suite includes two separate bedrooms with one king size and one queen size bed. The hotel is known worldwide for its paranormal activity and unique history. It's originally built as a log cabin back in 1840 by James Campbell, one of the first Texas Rangers. The Magnolia evolved over the years into a stagecoach station and a hotel. Anyone interested in touring the hotel can do so starting in October if you'd like some more information and want to be scared. <laughs> we have okay. links to a book room. Amazing. David does not website. believe in this stuff. He doesn't believe in this I, stuff. I very much believe in it. Ghosts. Me too. Ghosts are real. Katie Blake is into Halloween and ghosts. You would stay there, right, Katie? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Casper yeah. is the only ghost I believe in. Some will know who Casper is, some won't. Gosh. No, ghosts are real, and I'm not scared. <laughs> you know who Casper is? Yeah, I know who Casper is. They came out with a movie in the early 90s with, uh, what's her name? Not the only ghost I got. Uh, you know who I'm talking about, Katie. Yeah. No, totally. I think, I think that Travel Channel show Ghost Adventures, I think they went to the Magnolians again. I think, I think, I think so. I think several places have gone. So cool. I love it. Spooky season is coming. <laughs> um, <laughs> big fan of spooky season. Uh, we got a lot to talk about weather wise. It's beautiful this morning. I really hope you can spend a little bit of time outside or with the window open because it's just so pleasant out there. We've got temperatures in the 50s and 60s. Our dew points generally in the 50s, so that's why it doesn't feel so muggy out there. We've got some nice drier air in place. Winds are out of the north for now, just about 5 to 10 miles per hour, but I expect us to pick up a pretty good breeze by this afternoon. North northeast winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Temperature wise, we will be warming up here very shortly with plenty of sunshine. 80 at lunchtime high temperatures today, mid to upper 80s, so uh, not overly hot, but definitely on the warm side, but pretty comfortable just like yesterday. Uh, toward the end of the afternoon into the evening hours, we'll start to pick up a bit more cloud cover, even a low in chance of a shower by late tonight as the far outer bands of Tropical Storm Beta start to push into South Texas. Here's the latest on Beta as of 7 a.m. Winds holding steady at 60 miles per hour. Movement is still west-northwest at just three miles per hour. And really, this system is not going to speed up much during the day today. So even toward the end of the day and early tomorrow morning, 1 a.m. Monday, still out in the Gulf of Mexico. But again, uh, because this system hasn't intensified as previously thought, it's going to stay a little more disorganized, a little larger, and that actually helps us out here in San Antonio because some of that moisture um, will extend a bit farther out and get tossed our way. That helps us out with rain chances. Uh, but landfall is expected generally near the Port Lavaca area sometime late on Monday. But look at the, the 12 hour time span here as we get into Tuesday, 1 a.m., 1 p.m. Not much movement there, so slow over water, but it'll also get even slower as beta moves over land as we get into late Monday, early on Tuesday. So I want to show you what Futurecast is painting. Um, I think this is a little overdone in terms of how much rain we'll actually see, but what we can expect toward the end of the day, increasing clouds east of 35 and even a couple of showers trying to sneak in. I think we'll start to see our better rain chances kick in overnight tonight. Some light scattered passing showers will be possible and that will continue during the day on Monday. But look, the more widespread heavy rain that that's going to be well off to our south and to our east as beta moves ashore late tomorrow and into Tuesday. We get into Tuesday afternoon continuing to weekend, but a couple of lingering showers will be possible. So highest rainfall totals are going to hang out well to the east of 35 in San Antonio. Some of our easternmost counties, Lavaca County, DeWitt County, Goliad. You're looking at maybe between three to six inches of rain through Wednesday morning. As you get farther west, those rainfall totals fall off here in San Antonio probably closer to just a half inch of rain through Wednesday, but there will be periods of some scattered light showers. And just a reminder for our easternmost counties, flash flood watch is in effect until Tuesday evening. As you get some of the heavy rain could have some localized flooding issues, so do keep that in mind. Here's a look at your day tomorrow here in San Antonio. Yeah, it looks kind of cloudy and rainy, but keep in mind the rain won't be constant. It'll be off and on uh, as we get into Monday. Rain chances wrapping up by the middle of this week. Guys. Thank you, Katie.
Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's, and I know who Casper is, David. Okay, just check. They made a remake of that movie in the early 90s. Ooh, just that one. 818, <laughs> 64 degrees. Well, it's a perfect Sunday to lounge at home, watch some football, and have a slice of pizza. Just ahead, we'll tell you about some facts about National Pepperoni Pizza Day. Plus, getting a good nap in thanks to Pepsi. Coming up next, a look at its new product and when you can pop open a can. Put some melatonin in there or something. <laughs> All right, lottery numbers. Pick three, nine, five, zero, Fireball eight, daily four, seven, five, seven, four, Fireball seven. And you catch five is five, 19, 20, 23, 34, Lotto, Texas, three, five, 28, 31, 36, 46. Fireball 11, 14, 23, 47, 57, Powerball 14, Power Play four. Good luck. Welcome back in this world of super caffeinated coffee. We're drinking our coffee this morning. That's why we have so much energy. You may not think so much of caffeine in soft drinks, but back in the day, it was a selling point for Pepsi. As CNN's Ginny Most reports, the company is now turning that notion on its head. Remember the days when Pepsi was supposed to get you all hyped up? Come alive. Come alive. You're in the Pepsi. Generation. Well, this is the pandemic generation. All stress, less sleep. So now Pepsi is introducing something called Driftwell. As in drifting off to sleep. It's called Driftwell. The irony wasn't lost on Twitter. Caffeine company now wants to help people sleep. Forget giving folks energy. And helps put back the gold you thought was long gone. Pepsi's got a lot to now they're giving you tranquility in a can, blackberry lavender flavor. Can't sleep because you drank too much Pepsi? Try Driftwell. Available online at the end of this year and in stores the beginning of next year. A can of Driftwell contains 200 milligrams of an amino acid shown in limited studies to promote sleep and reduce stress. Though the price could induce stress, $18 for a 10 pack. Now it's Pepsi for those who think young. Now it's Driftwell for those who think I'm too old not to sleep well. Employees at Pepsi came up with a concept in a competition for the next big idea. Cynics Online tried to improve on the name with suggestions like Pepsi's and Pepsi Coma and Melatonin Do. One skeptic quoted George Carlin. It's called the American dream because you have to be asleep to believe it. <laughs> and to help you get to sleep, there's Driftwell. Come alive. Come to bed. Come alive. Genimos, CNN, New York. So if you can stay awake long enough today and you like pizza, what a great day it is. It's National Pepperoni Pizza Day. Yep. The first pizza reportedly created in 1889. Since then, pizza has evolved. People put a multitude of toppings from anchovies to pineapple to sausage and bacon on pizza. However, pepperoni remains the most popular. According to the Huffington Post in 2019, 52% of Americans surveyed said pepperoni is the favorite on pizza. Is that your favorite? Pepperoni? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if you're not going to get the supreme. But I'm not, pineapple is, is a little far out there for me. <laughs> supreme with jalapenos. Um, nah, we're cooking with I that. like pepperoni with lots, lots of Parmesan, like lots of Parmesan. All right, <laughs> it's 825 Eight. and 64 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, spotting the signs early on, details on the things to look out for if you have allergies or think you do. And activists continue to remember George Floyd this week after the break, where his name will now be honored. Some birthdays today. Oh, Jose is 32 years old today. We've got some 30-year-olds. I know. I, I love birthday seeing 30-year-olds submit their birthdays. Happy birthday, Jose. And this is Cecilia. She is 26. Oh, I love your pink dress, Cecilia. Happy birthday. Keep posting those birthday pictures on ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and age. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. And good morning, it is 
Thank you so much for starting your Sunday morning with us. It's September 20th. Oh my gosh, where is September gone? It's already it's behind us now. It's 64 degrees, so it feels like late September. This is what it's supposed to feel like, right? Yeah, feels really nice out yeah. there. Very pleasant. Um, and it's going to be another nice day. We had a very comfortable day yesterday. Yeah, warm, especially if you were right in the sunlight. But uh, we found some drier air in place this weekend, and that's, yeah, making it feel a little bit more like fallish out there. We've got the official start of fall coming next to or this Tuesday, not next Tuesday, this Tuesday at 830 in the morning. That's the autumnal equinox. Beautiful out there today. Maybe still a little hazy. It did look a little hazy at times yesterday. We have a very, very low concentration of some of that smoke from the wildfires elsewhere across the country in the air today. So that may make things look a touch hazy here and there. Otherwise, a lot of sun coming up today. 80 at lunchtime, 86 your high temperature this afternoon. And what you'll notice throughout the day is that we're going to see a gradual increase in cloud cover by late tonight, becoming partly uh, to mostly cloudy with a low chance of an isolated shower as tropical storm beta inches closer to the Texas coastline. Right now, the center of beta is still out in the west central Gulf of Mexico. It is moving west northwest uh, at just three miles per hour, and it's not going to speed up a whole lot today. So today into tomorrow, it will inch closer and closer to the Texas Gulf Coast. The landfall is expected tomorrow afternoon down between Corpus and Galveston near Port Lavaca. And again, that's expected later in the day tomorrow. Uh, Beta is going to produce some heavy rain well to the east of San Antonio and I-35. So we've got some of our easternmost counties, Lavaca, DeWitt, and Goliad counties. You're under a flash flood watch until Tuesday evening for the potential of some localized flash flooding issues. We'll talk more about how much rain you guys can expect and how much rain we're looking at here in San Antonio from Beta coming up in the full forecast. Guys. Thank you, Katie. Well, it's opening weekend at the San Antonio Botanical Gardens for their newest exhibit, Origami in the Garden. Visitors will have a chance to see paper art at a large scale. Alicia Barrera is live from the garden with more on the activities available today. So, Alicia, you were working on your origami, what was it, a hummingbird earlier? Are you, are you finished yet? Has it, how's it come it out? Was a, are you finished? It was, it was a hummingbird, and I was so close the first time, just the wings were a little off. So there you can see the little eyes, the beak, and then, of course, the wings, you guys. So I'm an expert. I should have my exhibit here. <laughs> Eliana Rodriguez, a director of marketing for the San Antonio Botanical Garden, is live with us. Exhibit, what are we standing next to right here? They're beautiful. Yeah, we're standing next to two beautiful uh, standing cranes, and we're super excited to have Origami in the Garden 2 exhibition debut the very first time in Texas at our beautiful botanical garden. So what makes them so special? You saw mine. It's a piece of paper, but these are definitely not paper. Yeah, these are definitely larger than live. And as you all know, origami starts with one single piece of paper, and that's how the artist started with these sculptures. And it's origami. Typically, you hold it with, you know, your hand. And these are definitely larger than live uh, sculptures of origami. And today, this weekend is very special. Y'all have some activities to celebrate opening weekend, the big debut. What's available for families? Yeah, so today from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., we'll have origami inspired hands on activities, as well as a cash bar and food and dating, and also some self, uh, self guided and guided tours to learn more about each of the sculptures. And then if they can't make it today, which we hope they do, they still have a chance during the week. Absolutely. So Origami and the Garden 2 exhibition will be on view until May 2021. So there's still plenty of time. And if you don't get a chance to come by today, you can come by next Thursday because we're kicking off with Origami Nights from 6, uh, 6 to 9 p.m. And you can come and explore and discover the sculptures then. Eliana, thank you so much, Director of Marketing for the San Antonio Botanical Garden. And you guys, you can experience uh, walk. It's so beautiful out here today, so quiet, so peaceful. And you get to view these beautiful sculptures that, again, start with a piece of paper. Reporting live from the San Antonio Botanical Garden, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Beautiful out there. Thank you, Alicia. Well, there are a few things happening this week, so we want to be sure you know exactly when they are. Throughout this week, September 21st through the 25th, there is something to keep on your calendar. Here's what's first on the list tomorrow and Tuesday. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is in need of blood donations. It's happening at Santicos Entertainment Cibolo in the AVEX Theater, number five and six. It's located just off of I-35 in Cibolo. Everyone who donates will be getting a Santicos movie ticket. If you want to participate, you will need to have an appointment. You can do so by calling 210-731-5590 or you can visit southtexasblood.org.
And KSAT will hold a political forum with the candidates for Bear County Commissioner Precinct 3 this coming week. Republican Trish DeBerry and Democrat Christine Hortick will participate in a debate on Tuesday, September 22nd. KSAT's Steve Spreester will moderate that debate. It will start at 7.30 p.m. and will be live streamed on KSAT.com. Precinct 3 encompasses most of the north side of Bear County. You can submit a question you would like asked by finding the story right now on KSAT.com. And Morgan's Wonderland Cheers to 10 Years Virtual Gala is happening on Friday, September 25th from 7 till 8. You can tune in to KSAT 12 on air, online, or one of our several other platforms for free. To donate, all you have to do is visit the website or text the number on your screen. MW Cheers to 797979. You can also find information on the events on our website, kset.com. We would also like to mention, due to the COVID 19 pandemic, that Morgan's Wonderland made the difficult decision to remain closed for the remainder of 2020. Now to the latest on the pandemic, which has killed nearly 200,000 Americans. According to a brand new poll, 53% of Americans have no confidence at all in Trump to confirm the safety and effectiveness of a potential coronavirus or corona vaccine. I'm sorry, corona vaccine. And this as schools are on are an ongoing concern, some dealing with new quarantines. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest. This morning, outrage in Massachusetts after a student tested positive for COVID-19 and their parents sent them to school anyway. This one was an egregious violation of the rules. 30 students in close proximity that day, all now in quarantine. Like, it's just really frustrating. I feel like I'm threatening my family's health. In Utah, where the state just reported a new record daily case total, one high school reporting 40 positive cases, 500 students in quarantine, some parents frustrated by the choice to go online only for two weeks. Why are you sending home healthy kids? They are wearing masks, they're being distanced as they're asked to. The American Academy of Pediatrics now with new guidance, recommending in part athletes who show COVID symptoms get an electrocardiogram to determine heart health before being cleared to play. Georgia 14-year-old Jaden Parrish tested positive for the virus, then suffered cardiac arrest in the hospital. Yeah, I was scared. I'm not going to lie. I was, the whole process was scary. It was just, I, at first, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to pull through myself. As the U.S. prepares to pass 200,000 COVID deaths, some massive gatherings like Missouri's Bike Fest are continuing unimpeded. 100,000 bikers expected, no masks or helmets required. Anything going on in the world, it ain't going to stop us riding. Now, baseball star David Ortiz revealing during the Red Sox broadcast on Friday he had the virus and it sent his brother to the hospital too. Man, this is no joke. You know, you don't, you don't realize how crazy this is in Turihi home. And with so many Americans skeptical of a potential vaccine, AstraZeneca has now released its blueprint aiming for a vaccine that's 50% effective. Some experts say the company has not been forthcoming after two AstraZeneca trial participants in Britain became seriously ill. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Also in your morning headlines, U.S. officials have intercepted an envelope addressed to the White House that contained the poison ricin. The envelope was intercepted at a government facility that screens mail addressed to the White House and President Donald Trump. A statement from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police says the letter appears to have originated in Canada. The FBI says there is no known threat to public safety. American users flocked to TikTok and WeChat before a ban went into place this morning. TikTok downloads were up 12% on Friday compared to Thursday. WeChat is seeing a 150% increase. People who have the apps on their phones will be able to keep using them. The Commerce Department is banning downloads of them, citing national security concerns. And this intersection where George Floyd died in Minneapolis will now bear his name. It's at the corner of 38th Street and Chicago Avenue where mourners have memorialized him. The name is commemorative, so mailing addresses won't change. Floyd's death has sparked a resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement here in the U.S. Well, it's 839 and 64 degrees. Still coming up after the break, spotting the signs of allergies in children. How can you narrow them down to the problem? Take a look outside with live cam. 64 degrees, 840 this morning. Take advantage of this cool fall like 
feeling weather. <laughs> Katie Blake will let us know what our forecast is for the rest of the day and week when we come back. At Relief, will there be a vaccine? What is the White House strategy? Today, exclusive Speaker Nancy Pelosi, plus the Powerhouse Roundtable on ABC's This Week. Welcome back. According to the CDC, roughly 50 million Americans suffer from allergies every year. They usually show up in infancy or childhood and can affect the way your kids sleep, play, and function in school. And if you're new to allergies, we have some signs you should look out for. According to Healthline.com, most allergens can be because of food, pet dander, or pollen from grasses or trees. If your kid has a reaction to any of these, they'll likely have runny, itchy, red, or swollen eyes that persist for more than a week or two. If you're seeing that this is a chronic problem, the American Academy of Pediatrics says these may be allergy symptoms, possibly of hay fever or allergic rhinitis, the most common form of allergy among children. When it comes to their skin, check for eczema. It will typically look dry, red, and can be scaly patches that itch. You should also check if they have hives. These red welts on the skin can range in size from as small as a tip of a pin to as large as a dinner plate. Finally, hay fever or other allergies can affect your child's breathing. If you hear a noisy wheeze when your child breathes, or if you notice rapid breathing or shortness of breath, have your child checked by their pediatrician. A dry hacking cough with clear mucus is another sign of respiratory allergies. Observe your child while they're playing. If they seem to tire easily or more quickly than other children, this may also be sign of allergies. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Well, also easing skin, respiratory, or intestinal allergy symptoms may require medication. To help in the meantime, you can teach your child strategies to avoid or decrease allergic reactions, including passing up certain foods, playing outdoors when pollen counts are low, and washing hands right after touching a pet. Speaking of pollen counts, are they low? Have we gotten those in yet, Katie? No. I know we usually get them later on Sunday. Yeah, Saturday. we haven't gotten them in yet today. Um, but if you recall, yesterday everything was moderate. We had fall elm. Ragweed and mold moderate yesterday. So, and fall home has been up there the past few days. So, that may be an issue. Again, on this Sunday, as soon as I get the pollen count in, I'm going to send it out via the KSAT weather app, and you can find it daily on the KSAT weather app. So, be on the lookout for that in the next couple of hours. Temperatures awesome out there. Still in the 50s in the hill country, 63 in Del Rio, 65 in Victoria, 64 here in San Antonio this afternoon. Here's how your temperatures will play out. It's going to be very warm out there again um, today, just like it was yesterday. If you were in the sun yesterday, it was definitely warm, but fairly comfortable because of the slightly drier air we have in place. Notice though what happens over closer to the Houston area. We get high temperatures dropping down into the low 80s. They're expecting high temperatures in the 70s today in Houston. Big reason for that because the cloud cover and rain from Tropical Storm Beta is finally going to start to affect Texas. It's been affecting other Gulf Coast states so far this weekend as that system has been almost nearly stationary the past 24 hours in the central Gulf. It is still not moving fast west northwest at three miles per hour and I don't expect it to speed up a whole lot today. It is going to be a slow trek west toward the Texas Gulf Coast over the next day, day and a half or so. Here's the very latest forecast track. So even by Monday afternoon, so more than 24 hours from now, this system still off the Texas coast. Here's Port Lavaca here. Landfall is expected Monday near Port Lavaca along the Texas coast uh, later in the day Monday by Tuesday 1 p.m. We've got the center of circulation moving inland. It's going to take a northeasterly jog over toward the Houston area as we get into late Tuesday and Wednesday. So we are looking at this system starting to toss southeast Texas some rain beginning today, continuing through the middle of the week. Highest rainfall totals and the most rain is going to be well to the east of San Antonio, but we still do have a shot for rain here in the Alamo City. Looking at satellite and radar, you can see the cloud cover starting to creep in now and this first outer rain band moving all the way through Lake Charles approaching the Houston area within the next couple of hours. And it's those outer bands uh, that I think could start to push closer to our direction as we get into the evening hours. So if we can get those bands to hold together, we could have a 
really, really broken line of some light showers working in late this evening. I think probably closer to 10 o'clock or so. And then overnight tonight, this is 2 a.m. We'll have some more light scattered showers starting to pace through tomorrow. I can't rule out a few pockets of heavier rain that should those stay east of 35. But during the day on Monday, you're going to see rain chances throughout the day. It's not going to be raining all day, but there will be a chance for some passing light showers throughout the day on Monday as beta works inland. As we get into Tuesday, that system will have continued to weekend. Still looking at the heaviest rain east of 35 and east of San Antonio, but a couple of isolated showers will still be in the cards even as we get into Tuesday by Wednesday. We dry out completely. So here's a look at the maximum rainfall potential over the next few days. This is through Wednesday morning. Highest numbers will be well east of 35. So some of our easternmost counties, Lavaca County, uh, DeWitt County down to Goliad. You're looking at three to six inches of rain as you get west of that. Places like Gonzalez, Carnes County, Wilson County, maybe closer to one to two inches of rain farther west than that. San Antonio, I-35 down to the south, likely less than a half inch of rain through Wednesday. So the heaviest rain will be falling off to our east, but I still am expecting some off and on light showers here in town during the day tomorrow. Some lingering shower activity late Monday night into early Tuesday before we clear things out. So we're going to keep an eye on beta for the rest of the day today. I'll have updates for you uh, later on this evening, guys. Bringing rain and bringing cool temperatures. That's 79 right there. I like that. Love that. All right, speaking of, it's 64 degrees and 8 at 8.50 this morning. Millions of students will be heading back to class struggling with speaking English, whether it's online or in person. Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll introduce you to one young woman who is helping immigrants and refugees break through barriers to succeed in school. Well, San Antonio police are searching for a suspect this morning following an overnight crash. According to officers on the scene, two people were driving northbound on Highway 281 near Mulberry when the driver lost control and rolled the vehicle over several times, landing on the wall divider. Both people took off running, but police caught one of them down the road. He is being held for a possible DWI. The other person in the car is still, miss is still at large. All right, before we go, we want to make sure we end things by putting a smile on your face. Of course, the pandemic has delayed, postponed, or canceled a lot of events across the country, including an annual dog surfing contest in California. Oh, so, so cute. The Surf Dog <laughs> Surfathon usually takes place in September at Del Mar Dog Beach in Del Mar, California. But this year's competition has gone virtual, accepting videos of dogs surfing from anywhere in the world. So just take a look. These four legged friends were divided based on weight class and judged on categories, including length of ride, size of the ah, wave ridden, ah. maneuvers such as walking on the board ooh, and turns on the wave and barking. The best in surf prize, as you heard, went to Sugar, a 10 year old champ from Huntington Beach, California. Proceeds from this event will go to Helen Woodward Animal Sh Center, which is an animal shelter. Hang in 10. Oh, look at the puggy. Oh, my <laughs> God. Second and third over the years. Just They're kind so of laying there. He's like, don't move. Is that hanging 20? Dog for snowboarding skills. She said all the locals. Funny, David. Those, <laughs> those are so cute. Um, pretty good forecast today. Through most of the day, we're going to have plenty of sunshine, that drier air. Later tonight, that's when we'll pick up some more clouds and even an isolated shower because of beta as beta hangs around the next few days. Heaviest rains, potentially flooding rains well to our east, but we'll have some off and on scattered showers here in town, mainly on Monday. Things will start to clear out by Tuesday. Beta is just kind of being, it's kind of a lazy storm. It is a slow mover. Slow yeah. mover, but sloth, uh, sloth. if something happens, you'll be back this evening at 530 and at yep. 10. We'll keep you updated. Update weather. All right. Thanks, sir. Thank you so much, David, Thanks, for joining us. Thanks, <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Have a happy Sunday. Oh, yeah, go Cowboys. See you back here at 530.